Hello, this is Eric of Spark eTech, and today I'm going to be trying out two different M.2 coolers. Here's our first one, a very small one, and we have several thermal pads that are included with this, though I do have my own, so I'll have to see if I'm going to use these or a different one. The metal plate is actually the name, if we saw that plate here, of this particular thermal cooler. Here are my graphics card there is a kind of a hot spot. So if anything, this is excessively big, but it will work, I think, nicely. And for those that want a closer view, here it is. Here is our thermal take cooler. So both of these coolers included a screwdriver for us to use. So it could be interesting to see how this goes. Most people might have a new computer and they're not gonna have assembled ahead of time. So what I'm doing now might not apply to you. So I'm going to skip most of this. Here I have my Seagate Fire CUDA drive. Time to put it in this big boy. In terms of using the screwdrivers, they are pretty hard to use with such screws. A few of these are kind of tight, at least one of them is. So for me, I think I might use a bigger one for the one screw. So much easier. Keep that in mind, your screws might be a little too tight to use the included screwdriver. The one was at least. Now I'll take this apart. Let's see what's inside. My first time ever open this. Okay, we got a plastic over our pads here it looks like. There we go, that's the thermal pad right there, that gray. Which way it's facing to make sure it's the right way around to my port is right here. So I'm making sure it's facing the right way and not backwards. Taking off the other side. And reassembling. Seems that these little screwdrivers have some magnetism to them, which is actually a wonderful thing. See, I got the little bit very useful for this kind of thing. This is actually way simpler to assemble than I expected. These pads on this thermal right cooler are actually, um, seem very nice. Holds in place good. I like the style now to see if it will actually go back into the slot. So right now what I'm also doing here is I'm trying to push up as I tighten and loose the screws because I want to make sure there's good contact between the top and the bottom. Because it's not good contact, it won't matter that you install the cooler because it won't cool properly. So give it a little push just to make sure the contact pads are good because there is some gap here. That fits nice. Okay, so we can see what I'm doing. There we go, let's see that focused on this. So I can show you in here. It's going to be hard to see still because this is an inner case. And I got to block the view. So I need to see what I'm doing. This screw is going to be very hard to put in. I can at least see that as being a bit problematic. Hopefully it won't be. Hopefully I'm wrong because the screw to hold it down is, anyways, it's extremely small. I'm going to go put the focus back to the computer case. There we go. I'm doing manual focus, by the way, if you didn't know that. Nice and snug. I, I'm pretty happy with this. I'm amazed at how well this fit in the case and how easy this was to assemble. So that one we just assembled is the HR10 from Thermalright. Absolutely a wonderful cooler to work with. This is one-sided. And you might be tempted to take this off. This apparently is a heat spreader. So I'm going to keep it on. Or at least backside heat spreader, whatever. Either way, time to get this done. Do I think these might be decent? I think these will work just fine. I don't know how well it's going to work, but we'll find out, won't we? Now for applying the thermal pad, I'm just trying to make sure it's in the metal and not sticking out at all. 
There we go. And when I applied it to here, same idea. That's within the metal itself. And again, I want to figure out where my key is. My key goes this way. So I want to assemble it in a way that my key is actually sticking out as it should be. I always recommend pre, pre-checking. Because just like the next guy, I don't want to be redoing everything. Make sure you're giving it a okay squeeze to make sure it's nice and snug as you put it in. Like, I don't mean like squeeze it really hard, just meant so it's making good contact. Give a little bit of firmness, but don't want to break your hand too either. La -da -do -do. Okay, small screws. These screws are hard to deal with. They're, they're very small heads. And that means I just dropped it. Okay, so far with these screws, the thermal right was a lot better experience to assemble. The problem is these threads are really driving me crazy. First couple were easy. Now I'm just going nuts. Let's try to place it in the hole first and see what happens. Try to place it on the hole by hand. Still not easy. Wow. What difficulty. See, it's all assembled. This part's gonna be against down here. Hopefully it'll fit in. It's gonna be nice and snug. First priority is keeping my stuff cool. Ooh, this is gonna be hard again. There, I think we got her. I think we got her. There we go. Well, we had a real scare here. Happens that I reset the BIOS. There's a little button on the bottom. Luckily, everything's good. All my drives are showing up. So the Seagate drive, that has the thermal right. I'm just gonna check this one first. 36 degrees Celsius. Not too shabby. I set up the whole entire BIOS, had it idling the entire time. Might get a little bit higher, but Let's even call it 30, let's call it even 40. It still would have been 20 to 30 degrees cooler than it was before. My Samsung 970 Pro drive went from its 53 to 50 degrees Celsius, and we're now at 41. That's after reboot, idling for a while. Just to be fair, we'll call it 45 degrees. That was still, even at 45 degrees, that still would be an eight degrees temperature drop. I do want to feel these coolers. I want to see if they're warm to touch because that's important. That will tell you ultimately how the heat transfer is. Wow. That cooler is hot, like almost too hot to touch. So it's, it is working. It definitely is working to spread out the heat. I'll leave that loose. I'll leave that loose for now because I am going to take some pictures. I bought this on Amazon, self-purchase. Normally, I wouldn't buy something like this, but my computer had been running hot. Top-down cooler is actually blowing air down there. So it, the top-down cooler that I'm using for my CPU cooler is actually working to cool off this M.2 because it's blowing air through. My CPU is only a 65 watt TDP. It's a Ryzen, uh, Ryzen, what is it? 79, 7900, non-X. 65 watt TDP, really low heat running CPU. When gaming, of course, that will heat up, definitely for sure. The thermal right was absolutely a pleasure to install. Couldn't ask for better. This is Eric of Sparky Tech. Leave your questions and comments below. What are your thoughts? Have you experienced this one? Which M.2 cooler have you used and how was it for you? Until next time, thanks for watching and have yourselves the most 
wonderful day. Peace.